morning guys. I was gonna do an intro for you guys, but I just got a call saying that the weather is good in Haya. I was actually not even planning on doing this flight today, but somebody hiked up the mountain so they could have cell coverage, called out here, said it's clear. We have two flights out there, myself and Brad. So now I'm kind of in a hurry to get out of here. So let's get out of here. Brad helped me get my plane ready this morning, so let's go. All right, well, let's get going before it gets cloudy out there, because it's forecasted too. All right, NG is coming up, oil pressure is coming in, fuel flow is coming up. I'm passing 35%, so ITT is topping out at 623. Yeah, looking at the weather, it looked like it potentially could be clear right this minute, the satellite, um, but that's sometimes deceiving. and. It's showing and forecasting just low fog clouds, and that's what it was yesterday on our way out to Wabuck. You saw my last video. Brad was supposed to do two of these flights yesterday, and it just didn't happen. He helped me out with my Wabo flights. We did five of them, actually. I'm going to go ahead and start this map right here. You guys can just follow along with um, the map. I'm going to have it on some of the parts of the videos, but... There we go. Okay, so you guys can follow along with this. If you guys are flight simmers, I'll be posting this on my Patreon page as well, so you guys can fly the exact same flight. Just go through these. Control systems, TAWS. We'll turn TAWS off for now. Switches and instruments, it's going out at max 8,000. Already have all my VREFs set in. Q&H, probably 1022. Our flaps are set, indicated, and verified at 20. And our trims are set up. Croker Tower, November Tango Kilo. Request taxi Haya 1 POB. Tango Kilo, taxi 17 left end of the trucking lineup. QNH 1023, time check 50. 1023, clear to back track lineup. 17 left, November Tango Kilo. 1023. 1023. Whatever I said, I have no idea. I thought I said that. got an overcast layer here, probably around, I'm guessing, 8,000, because that's kind of what the tops of those mountains are over there. It's clear to the bottom, to the south, and I don't foresee it hogging up before I get back. Do our governor speed check. There we go. I haven't been out to Hyatt in a couple of years with you guys or even myself. We used to go to this place a long time ago when I flew with MAF. I actually don't fly with MAF if you guys don't know. I fly with Ethnos 360. But I did fly with MAF for a year on loan, and I used to come out here quite often. But it's been a while. Tango Kilo, when ready, left it, clip Tango. Requesting a right turn out of a particular. Tango Kilo, one zero seven, right in. When ready, right hand turn, clear for takeoff. No, in particular. All right, ignition. We'll do condition here in just a minute. We've got our lights bypassed and everything. Ignition inlet and lights are done with that. I'm just waiting for my oil temp just to come up just a little bit more. So it's 19 degrees Celsius. So we use this chart up here to figure out our torque um, values for takeoff performance. So we go 50 under what it's saying, just because we have bypass on for takeoff, our engine inlet is in bypass, so it should be 1440. So I set my torque at 1390 here on the ground, and then by the time I'm rolling about airspeed alive, I look at my ITT, and it should be right around 720. If I'm below that, that means I can add a little bit. If I'm above that, by the time I'm airborne, I'm probably going to be over my 740, which is what we do for our climb outs. If I'm rolling 720 by the time I'm airborne, that extra 50 that I set underneath, because we're going faster now, it will actually bring that torque back up to more what the chart's actually saying. All right, well, ignition condition flaps 20, fuel and harnesses, we've already been given the takeoff clearance. 1390, rotate at 53.
All right, there's 1390, airspeed alive, or 702, so I'm just gonna bump it up a tiny bit, and there's our rotate already. Traffic, seven o'clock, same altitude, zero miles. That's probably just Brad's airplane turned on. Well, it's only like a 20 minute flight out here, if all goes well. My plan is to head out. We've got a little bit of a dark spot over there. That means that I can see the ridge and the mountain behind it. So that's where I'm heading to, is really kind of the Asaro South to get out of this valley. There are flaps up, put a prop on back to 2000 RPM. And then our ITT will set at 720 for a climb out, but I'm almost at my altitude already because I need to get up to like 7,500 feet to get over these mountain ridges. I'm at 6,000, so we don't really have too much further to go. Stroke Tower, November Tango Kilo, departed time 55, tracking 207 on climb, not above 8,000. Hiya 15. Number Tango Kilo, go, go, contact me, OSB, 120, this one, 65. Uh, second 8819 or 6598. 1201 or 6598, November Tango Kilo 15. Alright, so he gave me th th three frequencies. First is VHF, second is HF, and then the third was another HF in case that one didn't work. So it looks like it's looking beautiful out on well, the next valley, but I've got another, another valley range to head over to, so it doesn't really help me out that it's beautiful on the other side of these mountains, but well for part of the flight. Bring our torque on back to 1250, we'll leave it there for a cruise, then start taking out our right rudder pressure, because, you know, as we're going to climb, we have to actually have a lot of right rudder pressure in this plane. I'm lazy, and I just do full right rudder on takeoff. I think this is an older Kodiak, like 2014 model, I think. But since then, they've changed that, I think, and so you don't have to. And I know in the flight simulator, I've heard that you don't have to do that either, but I'm kind of lazy when it comes to takeoff. I don't really want to have to push on the right rotor as hard. All right, Taz is off, heading over here. I know we have a tower, like, right in this area down here, but it's not that tall. 500. All right, well, I guess 6,600 gets me over these. But the thing with towers I just mentioned, here in New Guinea, the towers are about as tall as a tree, so they're really not that critical like the United States where they're potentially hundreds of feet tall. I don't think I've ever, ever seen that because, I mean, they stick on top of a mountain and there's your few hundred feet tall, you know? It doesn't need to be any higher. Morsby 1201, November Tango Kilo. 500. Morsby 1201, November Tango Kilo transfer. Oh God, let's go with HF. Morsby 819, November Tango Kilo transfer. November Tango Kilo, Morsby, good morning, go ahead. Good morning, November Tango Kilo, one zero miles to the southwest of Garoka, climb below 8,000, estimating higher time, 1-5. November Tango Kilo, no reported traffic, carry QNH 1015. 1015, November Tango Kilo. So, my plan as I get into this next valley, I've got two options here. I've got one, I've got a kind of a big mountain in the middle, it's a big range, and I've got, I've got a 13,000 foot one in the middle, and then I've got gaps on either end of that, so I've got one at like 6,200 and then one at like 8,200. So the 8,200 one would be the easiest, that's, that's direct on track. And once we get around this corner, we'll see if that's even possible, I've got another 1,000 to go. But it looks like there's a lot of clouds out there, as you guys can see. But going on down the valley further on to my 6200, that's going to be my next best option. So I don't have to climb up to like 11,000 feet to get over and then get all the way down. 
From my perspective, it's not looking like it's going to work at the 8,000, but we'll climb up to 8,000. Bring our ITT up to 720 for a climb. So we can get up there a little bit quicker. And lots of right rudder pressure on this climb. Yeah, it's beautiful weather out here. That's the thing with New Guinea, man. It just changes it's so many different valleys. It's, it could be beautiful leaving Garoka and horrible where you're going. Uh, there's 200 feet to go. I'm just going to go on down to the next one because this one does not, from this perspective, doesn't look like it's going to work. So I'm just going to stay at 8,000. Head on down to the next gap because I'm seeing all the way down there. I can see the ridges going down. In fact, I can even see where that gap is and it looks like it's open. So I'm going to go with that one. And we'll bring our torque right back down to 1250. Now you guys can see the ridges popping out over top of these clouds. I think that's, uh, actually I don't know, I think like 12,000 feet. So there's really no point in going up quite that high though, I don't think, because I'm seeing the ridge down here. So we're just going to continue on down here rather than climbing up any higher than 8,000 for the time being. It's probably only 30 seconds difference maybe a minute at most by the time you work everything out. This is a good time to start pulling out my support strip chart. Okay, high up. Elevations, 2,400 feet. Make sure there's no notes for different touchdown zones, anything like that. Nope, okay. Runway, it's a one-way airstrip, 0 3, 500 meters long, 0.6% slope. It's going to be a right-hand pattern. And there's some mountains in the way. You guys can see these big kind of circles here. Those are mountains that you have to kind of go around, and it's not really a nice cookie-cutter um, circuit. Level with hilltop, 800-foot AGL turning base. Uh, it looks like this ridge here is just all covered with clouds. I think I could go over, but again, we don't need to. Committed, 200 feet AGL just at the river. If we do have to go around, it's like immediate right-hand turn out and then a teardrop back out to the left. In these videos, it doesn't really look like it's that tight of an area ever, but it, it can feel very tight very quick. Oh yeah, so this... <laughs> I, okay, so see how many clouds are coming in right here and they're just filling up the whole valley and it's spilling out over there. It makes me think that this valley on their side is it's filling with clouds pretty quick. If it's already just spilling over top into this valley, because these are two different valleys, that one over there goes all the way down to sea level, and so once the clouds come in, like they're in for the day, they're not moving. And Brad still has another flight out here as well. And then we have 14 passengers that we need to pick up. Oh, let's go ahead and put our uh, pattern altitude in here of 3,400 feet. Just verifying that's what it is. Yeah, 3,400 feet. Go ahead and start up some of this. Let's turn off my right fuel though, because I'm out of balance a little bit. Taws is still off. Our V-Ref. 5230. Oh, 60, 62 knots. All right, already set in. Lights and inlet will get here in a minute. And the winds are seven knots behind me. I'm just getting my text ready for our main office to let him know, hey, the, the weather's good, send Brad or don't send Brad. And it's runway zero 03. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw on my OBS right now. We're on heading mode, so we're going to turn it to zero 03. And what it does, you can see down here, it shows a little line, which is just draw the line for your runway. You can use this anywhere in the world, but it's really handy here because it's in a valley that's kind of, I'm going to be coming over, I'm not even going to be able to see it until I'm about a half a mile to it. So it gives me an orientation, okay, this is perpendicular, this isn't, things like that. Uh, 
And we want to head down to 3,400 feet. It kind of just depends on how much clouds are over here. What Wendy was showing, Wendy is the app, that shows weather here. It looked like it was a lot of clouds right here and it basically stopped right on Haya, like right there. So that's, that's what I'm hoping for. All stations, Haya, 120.1, Kodiak, November, Tango, Kilo, 12 miles to the north, 7,400 on descent. Circuit time, Haya, 1-1. One, one. All right, it is it is breaking up a little bit more over here, so that's that's good. Put it on the big screen so I can see where I'm going. Both knots behind me. Go ahead and set up our heading bug just to perpendicular, just so I have a quick, another quick visual reference. There's still a lot of clouds down there. I don't know. They're all touching the ground. If they were up higher, I'd rather them be up higher so you could get underneath and then come up the valley. But uh, I guess I'm gonna have to fly overhead to see if it's even clear. All right, lights and inlets are done. If we have to go around, we already talked about it. It's just immediate right-hand turn, power up. 20 degrees of flaps, pitch for 12 degrees. Right-hand turn followed by a left-hand turn and getting our ITG up to 740. Up and harness we'll do here in a minute. Go ahead and put our prop forward. We are just six miles out. That way when I'm overhead, I can just already be kind of at my slow speed and just enter it right into a circuit rather than kind of doing any circling and things like that. We'll do a harness here in a minute. We have flaps to go. Ah, there's, there's a lot of clouds right in the valley, all the way down to the ground. I won't be able to see it until I'm, oh no, am I seeing the runway now? Potentially. Four miles, uh, that, I think that's it right there. I think their valley's open. All right, well, let's get everything else done now. Pop and harness is done. We've got flaps to go. I'll hit send here if the weather is good in this valley. About 10 degrees of flaps now. Just kind of preparing to slow down. We're only two miles out. I still don't see it. All right, this is the valley it is in. Oh, it's right there. See what I mean? <laughs> okay. Ah, shoot. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to send it when I get on the ground. I don't even know if I can land yet. Let's go 20 degrees of flaps. A little bit high for where I want to be. Morris V8819 or November Tango Kilo in the circuit. Hiya, report after landing. November, single kilo. Alright, biggest thing is I don't want to get myself trapped in there with all these clouds. 62 knots. I'm going to go ahead and slow on down to 82 knots here. Uh, it's blue skies above, but man, there's a lot of clouds to be able to be doing a good circuit in here. I really don't want to go any lower until I know I can get in there. Yeah, I'm not seeing a really great way right this second, so... We just climb out of here. 12 degrees, 20 degrees flat. Well, a regular circuit is not gonna work. Let's try something else. Let's go over it the other way. Let's go take a left-hand turn here and fly back overhead, take a look at it from a different perspective.
I need to go right through there for my base, and that's not working. There's no way it's going to work. It's all into the ground. I'm just leaving my 80-20 set up right now. 20 degrees of flaps, around 80 knots. Right now I'm going 97, so go back over here and then fly down there and see if we can come up the valley, but I mean, these clouds could just close in pretty quick. And once they're closed in, then you're done for the day. You're not going anywhere. Well, that stinks. Yeah, there's the strip right there. Okay, so my go around would be coming up over this right top of this ridge right here and going back around. It'd be kind of low coming out. Looks like I have a, a cloud right on final potentially. The whole valley is open all the way in. I'm going to fly down the valley so I can get a good idea of what I'd have to get out of there with because I'd be coming out with people and Okay, underneath it looks like one of my bases, it looks like it's open. It's really tight though. We're just gonna fly down the valley. I'll have a good idea. I mean, I'm light now, so if I'm feeling uncomfortable light, then I'm not gonna do any of it with people. Sink rate. Pull up. Sink rate. 500. Uh, that's a pretty tight feeling, I think. You know, it probably doesn't look like it on the cameras, but when you're on the ground, yeah. I mean, I can get out here, I mean, it's still really easy out here. Then come around here and it probably continues to open on up. It's clear all the way out, so well, let me go ahead and fly back in. If I'm feeling comfortable, then I'll go ahead and land. Yeah, it's really clear coming in this way, so let's go ahead and just slow it on down now a lot. Full flaps. Checklist is complete. All right, now I just got to get over on center line. Five hundred. center line, but we're getting over there. Alright, coming up on committed. Everything looks good. Alright, I'm established, I'm committed. Slippery. Very slippery feeling. 
Moore's Beard 819 or November Tango Kilo on the ground. Hiya, cancel SAR. November Tango Kilo, Hiya, SAR, exterminator. November Tango Kilo. Oh, it's really bumpy too. I haven't been out here in a long time. Well, guys, I'm going to be getting these guys up as quickly as I can so that I don't really like that the fact they don't have a fence here and all these kids are standing right here. Yeah, we don't need 55 8-year-olds standing by a propeller. <laughs> Are just spinning or sliding, I should say. All right. Well, there we go. Um, yeah, I'm kind of debating to tell Brad to come or not to come, just because. Not awesome. It looks beautiful, but it's not awesome for landing. That's for sure. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining me. I want to get these guys up and out of here as quickly as I can in case any more of the clouds kind of come in. I just don't want to get stuck in here for a day or two. So, thanks for joining, and I'll see you guys next time.